Hello viewer, I am the Big Brother Hacker. Just call me Hack for short. I couldn't help but notice from the algorithm that you've taken a liking to creative strategies to overcome basic obstacles in the game of Big Brother. Well, guess what? Have I got a zoinker of a video for you today? Welcome to part two of Big Brother Players Hacking Competitions. Okay, compose myself. Ladies and gents, internet. My name is Pertium, and if you haven't seen part one of the first hacking video, which you most likely have, it's probably in your recommended video section, go check it out. I'll link it below. Although you can watch any part in any order. Regardless, we have a doozy of a list to get to today. So, uh, let's get to it. And speaking of, uh, speaking of doozies, what I meant to say was dizzy, because this first useful strategy took place in a competition on Big Brother 18 called Dizzy Dog. This comp involved players stacking a bunch of bones on top of a few pedestals. The first player to stack all 40 of their bones wins. The twist with the comp was that you had to go back to a spinning platform every 30 seconds to reset your shot clock giving you more time to keep stacking. Also, you did all of this in a goofy dog costume in the middle of a California summer. Because, why not? Everyone in the game began to create ornate foundations, stacking two on each side, or locking them together, or even doing whatever, uh, whatever Jose was doing. While you would think stacking them from the get-go would be the go-to strat, turns out there was an easier way that only Paul thought of. Because both braces on either side were parallel to each other, and because the bones were squishy, I don't know, styrofoam or something, Paul quickly realized you could jam them all together between the two poles to create a solid block. Which is exactly what happened, and that's the hack. By jamming all the bones together, they were locked in place, creating a very sturdy foundation with more room to maneuver. This meant that all Paul had to do was dump all of the remaining bones on top in almost any pattern and voila, competition over. The obstacle of being dizzy was negated, the point of being careful was basically non-existent, and the comp was over before you know it. And we never saw this iteration of the competition ever again. First I gotta find out how many bones will fit in between these poles. So I sandwich these bricks in the middle, and I feel like I got a good foundation to stack the other bricks. He's actually stacking blocks on top of this contraption that he has pounded in. There's no way that this caveman is going to beat physics. I'm thinking, I got this in the bag. <laughs> What's up? What's up? What's up? Yes! Woof, woof, woof. Oh, Just like in the previous video, let's give some credence to an old school comp. Big Brother 6. The competition was called Couch Potato, and it was pretty simple. You would sit on a sofa and stare at your television and be disappointed by whatever the latest season of Big Brother was on. Actually, okay, no, the, t the, the TV was off, and you had to turn your TV on and then change your channel to number 5. To do this, you would throw tennis balls at the TV, really should have been tomatoes if you ask me, to first turn on the TV and then to change the channel. Every successful hit would change the channel either up or down one number until you were the first to reach channel five in which you would then be the winner. But the catch with the comp, because there's always a catch, was that you were on a rotating platform so you had a limited window to take your shots. Not only was accuracy important, but timing was as well. But the creative strategy here was like a strategy seen in the previous season, Big Brother 5, between Drew and Diane, where they both helped each other to make sure a certain person won the comp. In BB6's case, both James and Sarah worked together to ensure that Sarah won the veto so she could use it on James without being the replacement nominee. Whenever James was able to throw his tennis balls, all he did was aim at Sarah's TV instead of his own. His TV was completely ignored. He just pelted away at hers to turn hers on and then change the channel as fast as possible. Two is better than one, and rather quickly the other players caught on to this strategy and began to do the same thing, targeting Sarah's TV instead of going for their own. Janelle and Kaser teamed up too, but it proved to not be enough as James and Sarah's aggressive strategy 
one Sarah the power of veto and ensured both their safety for the week. As soon as um, we heard the rules for the game, James and I knew right away that we had to get my TV to five first. James not once threw the ball towards his own TV. He focused on Sarah's TV the entire time. I don't know what Maggie's intentions were. I turned around, just time to see her turn Sarah's TV off. Congratulations, Sarah. If K is evicted, I'm gonna become the biggest bitch in this house. The next hack is my favorite of this video and it comes in two forms. In part one, the previous Big Brother hack video I made, I had a bunch of people bring up Johnny Mac in Big Brother 17 and his veto win down in the comments about how I didn't include it. And yeah, that is actually the next hack on this list. However, it needs to be said that JMac didn't actually concoct this creative strategy and I never saw anyone bring up the actual person who created this strategy, although Johnny Mac did execute it better. The competition itself is the final five veto of Big Brother 17 called Life in Pieces after the hit show Life in Pieces. Apparently this show ran for four seasons, so I guess props, that's probably higher than the average we see for these advertisements. Regardless, the comp itself involved players putting together a 20 piece vertical puzzle on a magnetized board where they had to run back and forth, hitting a buzzer to reset their time. They were given 20 seconds to put together the puzzle and if the timer ran out, the board would demagnetize and the pieces would all fall. So they had to keep running back across this balance beam every about 15 seconds or so to hit the button to reset the timer and then run back across keep working on their puzzle and so on and so forth. If they fell off the beam, the board would also demagnetize, so they had to pace themselves to some degree. Likewise, if the board demagnetized, they would have 10 seconds to hit their buzzer, otherwise they would be timed out and be eliminated. So really, if you do the basic math, they had 30 seconds in total, but 20 of those 30 seconds were to keep the board magnetized while the last 10 kept them still in the competition. Between watching the clock, keeping their board magnetized, and balancing across the beam, it was a competition all about time management, and so pacing yourself seemed like the key to success, right? Slow and steady should win this race. No! Johnny Mac didn't need to pace himself at all. The rock star Dennis strategy was simple. He ignored the magnetized board altogether. And you're probably thinking, how does that make sense? Most of the competition is predicated on the fact that this puzzle is vertical and the magnets are like the entire unique thing about the comp. Here's the hack. Johnny Mac, that rhymes, built the puzzle in the trough where all of the pieces were being held. Because it was a four by five, 20 piece puzzle, he instead created four stacks in his trough, ascending in order from bottom to top. He built the puzzle in the trough and then proceeded to arrange them on the board. But he didn't start building the puzzle until he had every single piece arranged exactly as he needed them to be. There were two advantages to the strategy. The first was more time. Instead of going back to hit his buzzer every about 15 seconds or so, John could go back every 25 seconds because remagnetizing the board wasn't necessary. All he had to do was stay alive in the comp, which required hitting the buzzer every 30 seconds. The second advantage was speed. If you ever fell off the balance beam, your board would demagnetize, but John didn't care about that because he wasn't doing his puzzle on the board in the first place, and so he could just sprint back to his buzzer and reset the timer, saving himself even more time. Everyone else would go back and forth on the beam, which was obviously slower, but the intended way. Ultimately, once John had the four stacks in order, he easily put them together, and there you go. A sweet, sweet veto. Almost sweet enough to give you a cavity. Whoa! Yes! I was going home, but then my friend Mr. Vito showed up again. We are the final four. Let's keep going and kill it. Oh, yeah! But it needs to be said that Shane in Big Brother 14, three seasons prior, actually originally thought up this strategy, and he also won the comp using it, but there was no balance beam in his version, so it wasn't as effective and likewise, he also didn't stack his tiles unlike John in the trough, which makes his execution more chaotic. My strategy to solve this puzzle is to configure it in my little trough, not up on the board. I wanna make sure that I have all the pieces I need and then start putting up the pieces. Two words, clown shoe. 
We haven't seen it in a hot minute, but it used to be a seasonal thing. During every double eviction of the season, usually the veto comp was this lane with ball pits, sprint and search, where players had to run to a pit full of stuff, dig around to find a few items, and then one by one return the items to the starting area. Fastest player wins. It's a straightforward competition, so what exactly is there to change? Run faster. Dig deeper. Get in better shape. Whoa, let's not get ridiculous. As the old saying goes, work smarter, not harder. We've seen this competition nine times across both Big Brother US and Canada, with over 40 players competing in it, and only twice has this strategy been used, and both times that it was, that player won. The strategy is so simple, as it usually is in this video, and it's all about saving time. Because this comp goes by so quickly, every second counts. The biggest hiccup with this comp is every player believes the moment they find the item in the pit, this item that they're looking for, they grab it and they run back to deposit it at the starting area. And then they run back to look for the next one. That is the overwhelmingly common strategy and it is straight up inferior to the alternative. Here is the hack. The moment that you find the first item, instead of running back, set it aside and keep searching for the next one or two, depending on how many you need. If you need three, search for all three and don't stop until you find all of them. Don't get me wrong, you will be tempted to run back and drop it off. You're gonna feel like you just found this new toy and you just wanna, you wanna reward everyone in the audience and yourself, be like, look what I found. But that weighs valuable time searching because the part of the comp that takes the most time is the searching, so don't take time away from that. Again, you might be thinking that makes sense, but only two people have ever not done that, and they are Hayden in Big Brother 12 and Kevin in Big Brother Canada 5. Also, technically Corey uh, from Big Brother 18 kinda does this, but it likely wasn't intentionally since he had to find three items and he found two and then rushed back before finding his third, which is counter to the strategy. Hayden was the first player to pull it off, and his was based on a trivia question, which I think is more impressive because there was a chance he could have been wrong with his two answers. I'm amazed he thought this up because it had never been done before, it was only the second time this competition had ever been used. He found his first answer and then set it aside and kept digging until he found the next one. It was very clearly intentionally done on his part, and the fact that nobody else, not a single person as far as I could tell when I rewatched the tapes, has done this in Big Brother US history is kind of mind blowing. With one card. Hayden making his way down. Meanwhile, in Big Brother Canada, I talked about Kevin in a recent video, particularly in regard to how he blew away the trivia comps on that season. But credit where credit is due, he also used this strategy from Hayden during the triple eviction to save himself. Similar to Hayden, Kevin had to solve a puzzle. It wasn't as simple as just finding the pieces. He had to find the right pieces, and he dropped all four of them outside of his pen once he found them all, and then he just scurried back and forth four times, grabbing them until he won. Again, very intentional, optimal strategy that saved his butt when he needed to most. Don't underestimate comp wins. Sometimes there's more than meets the eye. And so lastly, let's talk about an oldie but a goodie. It's a competition that we haven't seen for almost a decade now, and that is majority rules. It looks like every other true false trivia comp, but in this case, it was all about answering in the majority. Who do you think the majority would rather watch win Big Brother 22? A for Cody or B for Nicole? The objective here is to go with the house. Something New School Big Brother would be good at. Actually, it's probably for the best that this comp doesn't return because it was hacked and figured out and never seen again after Big Brother Canada season one, the last time we ever saw it in North America. To the best of my knowledge, it was never hacked in the US, at least not that I'm aware of, or to the degree that it was in Canada but the workaround strategy is straightforward. The majority alliance, the players in power going into this competition, all decided to pick the answer A for every question, regardless of the question. Straight A's. One by one, ever so surely, all the outsiders not privy to this strategy fell like flies until the only players left 
or the happy majority. Looking around, holy shit, the fix was in. And special credit to Alec on that season for putting this strategy out there. While it took a group to pull off, he was the one who originally devised the idea. Who will the majority of the house say they would least want love advice from? The majority has gone with A. The majority has gone for A. The majority has said A. The majority said A. Everyone has said A. And the majority, the majority says A, Tom. You're all staying and you're all going to tie break. And that's gonna be it. Five more examples of Big Brother players hacking competitions until they get yeeted into existence. If you guys know of any others I may not have brought up in this video or the past one, feel free to mention them in the comments. Maybe there's a part three out there, but either way, a big thank you to my clever patrons who have hacked their way into my heart. And thank you to everyone else for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit that buzzer on your way out, or at least on your way back across the balance beam, and I will see you in the next one once I find a way to hack the casting process of Big Brother to actually use these strategies myself. Yeah. Take your shirt off and let's pop it off. All right, all right. Yeah, sure. Sure. Okay. Yellow. Yellow. Rachel took off her Yellow. shirt to hold on to the wiener. I thought she'd just take it all off, take the bra off too. I think that would be a great strategic move. Here, here, let's do this. I'm gonna try to feed my t-shirt through the loop. So my goal was to feed my shirt through the hot dog and wrap it around so that our shorter girls could jump up and grab onto the shirt. Get it. Yay! bring it back! Bring it back! Bring it back! Well, when I jumped up to grab onto it, they started wheeling it really fast. The t-shirt! So now we only got one guy trying to get both the short girls to grab the top of the hot dog. Three more to go in each team. From that point on, I knew we were in big trouble. Well, in the back of my mind, I'm, I'm thinking that I sure hope Kathy's not the saboteur.